Okay, so welcome. We're going to be talking about um, Microsoft 365 for Mac OS users. So my name is Eric Groff, and um, I run the cloud practice here at Journey Team. And I personally have been using a Mac for 10 years or so. Um, yes, I'm a big Microsoft guy, and they pay my bills, and I use a Mac. And so um, here's some tips and tricks that we've uh, gained over the years of just interacting with uh, Microsoft services from the Mac platform that we're going to go over with you today. So what we've got here, just a quick overview of who Journey Team is. Um, like I said, I work in the cloud practice here, um, and Journey Team covers a broad set of technologies from Microsoft, everything from ERP to Dynamics 365 or CRM, uh, lots of collaboration and content that we do with SharePoint Online, Data and Power BI, and then we have a change management adoption practice as well. So that's a, a little bit of the breadth of what we cover from the company standpoint, and um, we we will jump into really M365, some tips and tricks there, and uh, what does that look like? So without further ado, uh, I wanted to start with just some general Mac OS tips. So um, things that will help you be more effective on your Mac from a security posture and productivity standpoint. So the first thing here is um, use Pathfinder. Uh, as a better tool for file navigation on Mac OS. Um, that's a third party tool. I'm not trying to plug them. They're not sponsoring us or anything like that. But um, the Finder app um, coming from the Windows world, um, it has a few things to be desired from just navigating a file system. So that's one little thing to consider. If you want to see hidden files inside Finder, uh, a quick little hotkey for that is uh, Shift Command Plus and then you can see hidden files. So that's a quick little hotkey that comes in really handy when you need to see hidden files. Um, and then um, opening Finder in a specific location, um, that's uh, uh, you can right click and open Finder in a specific location there, which is a super helpful tip there. Um, using command space is one of my most commonly used things. So on a Mac, uh, command space is gonna bring up your uh, search engine and you can search for local files and uh, applications and so when I want to launch an application command space I type word I hit enter word launches okay so that's super helpful um, to show the full title path in the find or the full the full path to a file in finder of where it's locating um, you open up a terminal and run that command that we've got listed there defaults right com apple blah 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 and then you'll get the full url or the path it's not the url it's the full um, file path of where you're looking at and things in finder so those are just some tips on finder um, use your trackpad and get familiar with gestures if you're on mac uh, hopefully these are pretty comfortable and um, that is Probably the one reason why I stay on Mac is because of the trackpad and the gestures and the fluidity um, of navigation around multiple desktops and app selections and things like that. So I'm a big fan of that. Um, command tab lets you switch between applications, um, just like um, typical Windows. And then one of my favorite ones is control tab. If you are uh, a tab geek in a browser, then control tab is your friend because it'll flip between tabs in the browser itself. Quick one, if you're walking away from your Mac and you just want to lock it, command con or hit command control Q. And that's your hotkey to lock that as you walk away. Um, you can also unlock your Mac with your Apple Watch. So go into the setting. The screenshot I've got there shows how to enable that. Super simple. And then as you walk up to your Mac, uh, your watch will unlock it and uh, get you access to it really quick. So there's some tips there. So getting more into M365, number one, it, the very most important thing is make sure you get Office 365 for Mac installed. If you are not on the latest version of Office 365 for Mac, you're using an older version, or you don't have a license for uh, Office 365, um, that's the very first thing I would recommend. Um, it is a first-class citizen now. Uh, I, I do all my productivity work inside Office on my Mac. I don't use Windows and a Parallels VM or anything like that. Um, so just get Office for Mac installed. Uh, there's a screenshot there on the left of where to go to portal.office.com and you'll get the download option there and you can pull that down and get that installed. That's the number one thing. Number two, uh, when you're working with files inside any of the Office apps, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, 
pinning recently used or commonly used files is really helpful. So if you go to file, open recent, and then hit the more option, it will list all your recent files. And there's a little pin icon there, that center center screenshot shows you just you know where you would pin that and then it makes it really sticky and easy for you to open uh, common documents that you're working on and you can unpin pin and just make that fluid as you're working through stuff um, use the quick actions option in finder this is super helpful so um, when you have the OneDrive client installed, which I'll talk about in just a minute, uh, when you right click a file or a folder in Finder, you'll get what I've highlighted there on that right screenshot, which is a place to view it online or get the URL of it. And that's a really quick way to jump into the browser for the document. And then from there, um, you can easily grab the URL to it and share that to someone or share the file directly from there, things like that. So that's something I use all the time as well. Okay. All righty, let's jump into uh, OneDrive on the Mac. I'm a big fan of the OneDrive client. Um, it's come a long way over the years and um, it works really well on the Mac. Uh, the sync engine is really solid. They fixed that to four years ago or so. And so um, I am a big fan of using the OneDrive client to integrate with SharePoint Online and my OneDrive for Business sites. Okay, so a couple things here is learn and understand how to sync folders to your Mac for easy access via Finder. Uh, they'll show up in Finder. Um, you can see the file system there or the folder structure there. That gives you the right click ability to jump it into a browser if you need to. And you also um, have the files on demand functionality. So one tip about here is when you do hit sync and where is the magic sync button? It's gonna be inside SharePoint Online or Teams. Uh, when you're in a document library, um, across the top, you will see a sync button. And so if you want to be able to see those folders in sh the SharePoint document library from the Finder interface of your Mac, then sync is going to be your friend. Make sure you know where you are in the folder hierarchy or the level when you hit sync, because let's say you've got a document library and four levels down and then subfolders is where you are looking in the browser when you hit the sync button. That's the folder that will sync from there down. Okay, so then when you're inside Finder, you're gonna see that folder level and you may wanna be able to sync from the top level is the point there. So that's an important tip there to understand where you're at when you hit the sync button in the browser to then map that folder into the OneDrive client. The left screenshot that I've showing there shows where you inside the OneDrive client, if you go to the pro pro preferences in the OneDrive client, where you'll see what document libraries you're syncing on the Mac. Okay, same thing applies to Windows, but it works on Mac as well. Um, and then another really important feature here is to enable the files on demand um, to preserve space. So the Outlook, excuse me, the OneDrive client will um, not synchronize everything in the document library, but it lets you see everything in that document library from within Finder. And if you need to open it, it'll sync that one there and cache that one there. Uh, if you haven't used that file in a long time, it will unsync that for you. And so it's not like you're syncing the entire document library to your hard drive and taking that with you, but you do have the ability to uh, files on demand, sync that content and work on it offline and it'll sync up next time you have an internet connection. So the takeaways there is OneDrive is your friend, understand the sync process and make sure files on demand is turned on. Okay, uh, next tips here is um, when you're working with teams on a Mac, um, the tabs across, so you're looking at a team and you've got your channels and there's by default the files tab across there. I personally much prefer to use the interaction with the documents and even planner, for example, not inside the Teams client. And so I all the time I'm hitting this open in SharePoint button from within Teams. So that'll just pop me over to the browser. And from the browser, then I've got a bigger landscape, bigger footprint to interact with the content and the document libraries and things like that, rather than kind of inside the Teams client. Okay. I love to use the Teams client for co collaboration and chatting and things, but not editing content and working in Planner. I always pop that over to the browser. Okay. So that's just that tip there. Um, next tip is a whole list of things, just kind of more general things. Uh, use Edge for your Microsoft browsing or M365 interactions. Um, the Edge browser built on the Chromium engine is wonderful, and it does have a nice native integration for single sign-on when the Mac is managed by uh, Intune. And so... Um, 
these screenshots here, if you're using Chrome for a Mac, then you want to go get the Windows 10 account or Windows accounts is what it's called and the My Apps uh, secure sign in extension. There's a screenshot of what those look like. The names are listed there. You can get those from the Apple uh, store for the Chrome extensions. And this helps to give you a better seamless single sign-on experience uh, from the Chrome browser when the Mac is managed by Intune. And it also gives you a quick way to look up the enterprise applications that you may interact with from the myapps.microsoft.com backend. So two really nice extensions to drop into Chrome there that I would recommend. Um, and then just uh, another important URL that you should know. This is really um, less Mac-y and more just being aware of the M365 ecosystem, aka.ms slash mysecurityinfo. Um, this is where you can manage your multi-factor enrollment options. You can manage the devices that are associated to your account. You can look at your sign-in activity. Uh, you can see if your user is a guest in other M365 tenants and remove yourself if you're no longer working with those uh, um, tenants or those environments. And so that's a, just a really helpful URL that, that you should be aware of. Um, uh, FIDO2 keys work with Mac really nicely um, so that I can do single sign-on and multi-factor with a, a USB key, um, USB 2 or USB-C. Um, and so that's all managed through that My Security Info space there. And with that, that's what I had. A quick run through of some tips on using your, your Mac with Microsoft's World. Uh, in summary, I would say we... Um, I can do everything I need to from a productivity standpoint just fine on a Mac. Uh, I use Outlook, I use Word, I use uh, Excel, I use PowerPoint. Um, and so all of those things, uh, I work great on a Mac. The only thing I don't use on a Mac is Visio. Um, and so there's Visio online, or um, but from a core productivity standpoint, I have no problem interacting with all those uh, services. So hope that helps and let us know if you have any questions or we can help you know more of anything. Thank you.